Should the police be monitoring your Facebook wall? Should Mark Zuckerberg be monitoring Facebook's wall? Should I be monitoring this wall? For March 4th, 2016, from the stylish high-tech underground studios of Ribbit Media, in cautiously warming, wait, no, cooling, Cranston, Rhode Island, this is News Undies. For March 4th, 2016, this is News Undies, all the news that shouldn't be news. Moose Weintraub has the week off. I'm Paul Torville with these headlines. Fans of the Naked Gun and Airport movie series are crying 747-shaped tears over gas-powered vibrators as word has come out that actor George Kennedy has died. In Alabama, apparently, they have a problem with people posting on social media instead of calling 911. Like... Your house is being robbed while you're in it. Facebook posts saying, Hey, police, come quick. There, we're being robbed. LOL. This is a problem in Gardendale, Alabama. Please tell me, people of Gardendale, do you believe the police are just monitoring your Facebook wall? You do, don't you? You probably think the TV is watching you back. <laughs> it is. On the other end of the policing spectrum, in Utah, you have a better chance of being fatally shot by a police officer than you have of being killed in drug-related violence, gang-related violence, or as an abused child. Well, that's awesome. I wasn't planning on moving to Utah anyway, but wow! <laughs> if that's how they protect and serve, <laughs> I'm all set with that. And speaking of social media, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook fame has had to tell employees at his company to stop erasing Black Lives Matter from the cleverly placed Facebook wall chalkboard graffiti areas on the company's campuses. Uh, this is why we can't have nice things. And irony of ironies, all this might have been prevented if Facebook had a dislike button. It's unclear if Macedonia is a wholly owned subsidiary of the Trump Organization, but the nation's hard line on Syrian refugees trying to enter into the country through Greece suggests it might be. Come on, Macedonia. It's time to let it go. It's been 2,600 years, and they're not even Persian. You need to let it go. Whole Foods Market has recalled cheese. Cheese! already spoiled milk. Well, apparently it was raw milk, blue cheese, from the Maytag Dairy. <laughs> and it was contaminated with uh, listeria, which is particularly unpleasant. I'm sure the washing machine people are just delighted to hear about that. And in squirrel news... What if you held a squirrel slam and everybody showed up? I'm not entirely sure what a squirrel slam is, although I'm inclined to think it might be a new menu item at Denny's. <laughs> I'm probably wrong about that. Anyway, in the little town of Holly, New York, which is near Lake Ontario and, like, Rochester... They have an annual event, which they call a Squirrel Slam, and apparently it involves competitive squirrel murder. Hooray! For the last few years, environmental activist Richard Brummel, a resident of New York City, has made the trek all the way out to Holly to protest the slams. And in past years, he's been joined by 50 like-minded folks, but this year, owing to the cold, it was just Brummel and his sign. The Pro Slam boosters were there across the street, outnumbering Brummel five to, well, one. They don't call them emergencies anymore. They call them Patronies. Coming up, what's so super about it? When is it okay to speak ill of the dead? And will we do it live, Bill? Will we? Whether you prefer post-industrial vampire trance music or neo-gothic nerdcore speed thrash, Royal Records is the record store for you! 
Royal Records has albums and cassettes from many of your favorite artists, including The Letterman, The Righteous Brothers, The Insane Clown Posse, The Slipknots, and The Nine Inch Nails. No matter your taste, you'll find the records and tapes you love at Royal Records, Main Street Downtown. Open weekdays from 10 to 4. Courtney Stodden. Super Tuesday happened, and it was really exciting. I mean, Donald Trump came out of it with 50% more delegates than Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz finished with more than twice as many delegates as Marco Rubio. And Marco Rubio has better than five times as many as John Kasich. And Kasich? Well... He has more than three times as many delegates as Ben Carson. Donald Trump has nearly 40 times as many delegates as Ben Carson. This left Ben Carson to sleepily come to the realization that there is no political way forward. He has not so far officially announced that he is suspending his campaign. <coughs> Quitting! <coughs> With less than a twelfth the delegate hall of Trump, Kasich is holding on to his optimism. Good for you, John. Hang in there, sport. And Trump, amazingly, has survived an endorsement from the former Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan, David Duke. Eventually, Trump half-heartedly denounced Duke and his endorsement, but it should be clear to almost anyone capable of scoring better than a composite six on the Glasgow coma scale that either Duke is a troll or Trump has done or said something to invite the endorsement of such an individual. Is the Republican base just out of their fucking minds? We should probably avoid completely dismissing that possibility. And also Louis Farrakhan. Yeah. The white racist and the black racist think Trump is pretty groovy. Who saw that monstrosity coming down the road? On the Democratic side, the choice is much more confined. Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders. So far, Clinton continues to win, but not by a lot. Sanders took four states to Clinton's seven, and Clinton finished with 1,052 delegates to Sanders' 427. One should bear in mind, though, that 451 of Clinton's 1052 are superdelegates. She's only won 601 in primaries, and all of those superdelegates could, could, change their vote if, you know, the wind shifts. So, if this were it, if we had to take the front runner from each party, and uh, have the election today, it would be Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton, which basically means a bipolar lemur with a speech impediment stands a better chance as a write-in candidate. <laughs> and the cherry on top, Chris Christie as Trump's hype man, looking like Beaver Cleaver on stage with NWA. Just let that sink in. As we do from time to time, let's spend a little while with our resident cranky old man, Kurt Mudgeon, in Kermudgeon's Corner. Whatever happened to coal? I remember coal being everywhere. Ships and trains and factories ran on it. Stoves and ovens ran on it. Furnaces and foundries depended on it. When electricity came along, practically all power generation was coal-fired. There was nothing that didn't run on coal. Coal mining was a respectable and necessary occupation, and the soot, illness, injury, and death that came with the extraction and consumption of coal was a fact of life, and more than a little comforting. Today, coal is demonized. You can't burn coal in an uncontained setting without getting the stink eye, or a fine. And it's a shame. Coal is part of what put America on the map. That and genocide, slavery and reckless disregard for long-term environmental and health consequences. If I didn't think it might kill me, I'd eat coal. I'm that much of a fan. 
Aren't the consequences of extracting and consuming coal, if any, trivial compared to the benefits? A little soot on your face never hurt anyone. Wind and solar will never be as cheap or profitable as coal because they will never get the preferential treatment from the government or benefit from the head start that coal has had. And that's fair, traditional, and right. Thanks, Kurt. Now that Antonin Scalia is dead, there's every chance that everybody who thinks they've been wronged by him over the years will come out of the woodwork and tell their story, for whatever reason. The tip of the iceberg appears to be Arnim Johnson's story that Scalia flunked every black student who took his class while he taught at the University of Chicago Law School from 1977 until 1982. Does this matter now? Here are Pig and Sheep with their thoughts. Of course not. Antonin Scalia was a hero and a patriot and a gifted ventriloquist. Wait, wait, hey, wait a second. Was Scalia a racist? Maybe. If his former students are to be believed, maybe there's a strong chance. But he's dead now. Sure, we can speak ill of the dead. I don't even really have a problem with it in principle. But does it fix anything? Does it make anything better today or in the future to call a dead guy a racist? Probably not. That's what Pig and Sheep think. What are your thoughts? Email them to ovcomments at newsundies.com. That's one nice thing about a 707. She can do everything but read. Still to come, George Pell is an asshole. And Bill O'Reilly. For your upcoming wedding, bat mitzvah, or funeral, trust the professionals at Blas Florist to create the perfect mood-appropriate arrangement. Your special occasion will be so much more special with a Blas Florist arrangement. Blas will help your memories be that much more memorable. Call or click today to order your unique and not at all sexually suggestive arrangement from Blas Florist. Blas, the florist you shouldn't fear. Stacy Dash. And now here's this week's Dear Superman. Dear Superman, is your super suit super too, or is it just a body stocking? Sincerely, name withheld. If you have a thought or question you'd like to share on Dear Superman, submit it as a story tip or leave it in the comments below. Just be sure to start it with Dear Superman. I'm not revealing any great secret by saying religion is bollocks and God is just pretend. Am I? Roman Catholic Cardinal George Pell has stated out loud, in earshot of others, with what appears to have been intent, that the reports of rampant sexual abuse of students by clergy at a church-run school was a sad story, but that it wasn't of much interest to him. I suppose he can say that now that he's no longer the Archbishop of Sydney and lives in the Vatican, beyond the reach of petty secular law, fuck George Pell. And in Great Britain, sticking with the religion is bollocks and God is just pretend theme, the Church of Scientology has had to pull a television commercial because of a charge of misleading claims. The ad claimed that the church works with volunteers of many faiths and has given aid to 24 million people in times of need. When confronted, the Church of Scientology reverted to the standard backpedaling made famous by used car salesman caught in a lie. That 24 million? Uh, all volunteer ministers from 1988 until uh, 2014. Wait, <laughs> is that all volunteer ministers or is that all Scientology volunteer ministers? The crickets are deafening! And finally, and I do mean finally, we all saw this coming, didn't we? 
Gigantic pushy Fox News bully Bill O'Reilly has now officially lost custody of his two teenage kids. The court has cited abusive behaviors like dragging the child's mother down some stairs by her throat. It's comforting and reassuring to know that the pushy, abusive, condescending jerk who hosts The Factor isn't just a character he puts on. That same guy is raising children. Great. Well, that's all for this edition of News Undies. If you see news that shouldn't be news, you can submit your story tips online at newsundies.com or on Twitter with the hashtag NUSTIP. News Undies is a weekly show. We'll be back on Friday, March 11th with fresh undies. If you like this video, please like this video. If you like the show, please spread the word. Got a question, comment, or suggestion? Leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. Circle us on Google+. Plus, Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Ignore us on MySpace. Tell your friends and buy News Undies Kitsch at newsundies.com. Thanks for watching. For all of us here at News Undies, until next time, I'm Paul Torville. After that, I might be trying to get a Boeing 707 to stand on its nose. <sighs> Thanks to story tipper, the real Paul Marshall. I just want to tell you good luck. We're all counting on you.